Hi everyone, Grace McDonald here with your Farm and Ranch News. Hopefully you noticed there is a new face on your screen today. Well, after two years as the Ag Broadcasting intern on the radio side, I decided it was time to steal the spotlight from the boys for a change and try out TV. Well, the Fort Keogh Livestock and Range Research Lab recently celebrated its 100th anniversary. From an Army Cavalry fort to one of the largest ag research stations in the country, the Fort Keogh Lab has played a significant role in the expansion of agricultural research in Montana. Research leader Jay Angerer said that one of the most notable aspects of the 55,000-acre facility is their special line of Hereford cattle. The herd is a purebred line of Herefords that was started in 1934, and ARS and Montana Ag Experiment Station worked on this closed herd and doing line breeding. They did several lines, but the one that became the most famous was the Line 1 herd. It's one of the longest-running beef cattle selection experiments in the world, and it's formed the foundation of modern genetic evaluation of beef cattle. The Fort Keogh Research Station will have a full centennial celebration on May 30th at the Custer County Event Center. Well, the House of Representatives passed a bill this week co-sponsored by Representatives Zinke and Rosendale that withdraws the BLM's conservation and land health rule. The rule elevates conservation as a land use with a new conservation leasing program that has seen significant pushback from the livestock industry. We'll be back here shortly for the markets. I represent a lot of what ranchers' wives are, where they marry into the family. Coming in to established ranch, the expectations of that is just absolutely overwhelming. You know, there's always stress with all families, but when you're not dealing with the stress outwardly, it will definitely impact everyone inwardly. You might feel alone, but you're not alone. Thanks for joining us for the Ag Report. The House and Senate each released proposals this week outlining the sections of the Farm Bill. Both frameworks would increase crop insurance premium subsidies for beginning and veteran farmers. The Senate's plan expands the SCO option by boosting the premium subsidy and increasing coverage levels. For reference prices, Thompson's plan allows for an expansion of base acres for farmers who can't enroll in ARC and PLC. Stabenow's plan would see a minimum 5% reference price for increase and more for cotton, peanuts, and rice. Although the avian flu left traders uneasy early in the week, the fact is that no avian flu fragments have been found in beef cattle, which has allowed the market to rebound substantially. Cash-fed cattle is two bucks higher on the live sales at 185 to 187 and dressed steady from 292 to 295. Big cows sold steady at the public auction yards yesterday with lighter ones steady to four bucks higher. Heavy cows brought in 119 to 140, fleshy cows from 116 to 136, and lean cows at 106 to 124. Lamb prices in Sioux Falls fell lower, selling from 270 to 315. Slaughter ewes four to five lower at 65 to 110. The wheat contracts have recovered after three days of lower sessions. Bullish to the market today is the talk that India is likely to import a big shipment of wheat this year, as the country's wheat stocks are going to be much lower than a year ago. Well, that's it for today's report. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day.